Good morning. Let us continue with uh, our lecture on differential kinematics. We have just started this new topic with the first lesson on, let me say, introduction on the geometric Jacobian. And we will now be able to build the geometric Jacobian for a generic uh, robotic structure. Let us just remind uh, briefly to what we have done well, yesterday. First of all, differential kinematics deals with the relationship between joint and, and effector uh, velocities. We want to understand from the mathematical aspect how those two quantities, those vectors, uh, relate one each other. Okay? And uh, our objective for today is to be able, from the theoretic aspect, to build this matrix J. Okay. This is a matrix with exactly six rows, and uh, the number of columns is the number of degrees of freedom of our, of our robot. What we have done yesterday was simply, let me say, but not so simply, to uh, acquire to some new mathematical concept, new for most of you. So to compute the time derivative of a rotation matrix, to compute the velocity of a generic point of a body with respect to a frame, and let me say, finally, the last step before building the geometric Jacobian to compute the linear and angular velocity for each link of the robot. The time derivative of a rotation matrix is, this, is given by this expression. R dot is equal the multiplication between two matrices the rotation matrix itself and uh, a strange anti-symmetric matrix that embeds the angular velocity. And this is the expression of S. Then we have seen how to compute the time derivative of point P expressed in two frames. And uh, we have seen that uh, this is useful. Okay, the expression is this one. Okay, p dot zero is this is the expression, and we have seen that uh, this is useful in order to compute the linear and angular velocity of the link. This is the linear velocity. This is the angular velocity. This expression here is the angular velocity. It's very intuitive, and I mean those steps we skipped the steps, steps, and then. Uh, we finished yesterday in, uh, with this page where we discovered that, in fact, we do have uh, uh, two equations that allows us to compute the way linear and angular velocity, this is the angular, this is the linear velocity, of the frames attached to each link propagate along the structure. What does it mean, propagate? I wrote each of the two velocities with respect to the previous one and to the increment. So the contribution of the movement of the last joint. Now, for the angular velocity, it is trivial from the notation aspect because it's just the sum of the angular velocities. For the linear velocity, I have three terms the linear velocity of the previous frame, the relative linear velocity, the subscript i minus one comma i means the relative between i minus one and i, plus, well, this is, let me say, the effect of, this is the effect of the angular uh, velocity of the link. Okay, the cross product between the angular velocity and the uh, 
displacement between the region of uh, the links. Now, those two expressions are uh, generically written for vectors expressed in 3D. However, let us uh, specify the terms of the contribution for, its, for each kind of uh, joint that we will meet. If uh, we have a prismatic joint, I clearly has that the contribution to the angular velocity of this joint uh, is zero. Let us just verify it. Uh, okay, I repeat it every time. For the students uh, remotely connected, uh, send me an SMS in case the connection is lost because I, I don't have a way. I tend to distract myself, okay? So let us verify easily why we do have this property. Uh, we have uh, a robot uh, and at certain point uh, we have uh, a prismatic joint, okay? So this is a prismatic joint and this is his mobility. Now the expression, let me up, I, I, I just have to upload the PDF. Just one second. Okay, uh, let me move the draw. I, I don't know if the Jamboard I can just move a draw, but no. Okay, so now if I have uh, a certain frame, omega i minus one is connected to this frame, uh, sigma i minus i minus one, and then minus one. And then here I have uh, a prismatic joint, and this is, for example, sigma i. Clearly, the relative angular uh, velocity will not change due to the fact that the mobility of this link is only in that direction, linearly in that direction, because it has it exhibits one degree of freedom, okay? The contribution to the linear velocity, to this term here, is given by, if you look at the expression, is given by the contribution of the joint velocity. This term here is d dot i, the velocity of the joint. I can measure by means of sensor. Okay, for the rotational joint, the encoders, for the prismatic joint, there are similar sensor that gives me the linear velocity. This is a data. And then the direction is this one. And this direction is z i minus one due to the fact that we are using a convention that guarantees that this is the direction. So the, 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 um, the importance of the Denate Artemis Convention is that I can always uh, uh, affirm that the direction of the relative velocity is aligned with 
the z unit vector of i minus 1. It means that uh, the angular velocity of uh, the, the, the link is unchanged with respect to the previous one. It's totally coherent with our intuition because this guy is moving in that direction. And if it is moving in that direction in a structure that it's exhibiting a certain angular motion, of course, the relative one is, the, is zero. For the linear velocity, uh, the expression is, uh, let me say, more or less unchanged, okay? The only difference is that now I can write this term as function of the joint. And this is very convenient. We will, uh, we will uh, see in a few minutes, in 10-15 uh, minutes, that it will be very easy to, to build uh, the, the Jacobian, because now we are simplifying our expression. On the other hand, if our joint is rotational, what I see is that the relative movement here is given by the amplitude of the joint velocity. Again, this is uh, measured by mean of encoder. And the direction is given by a certain unit vector that I do know because it's given by the Dennett Aptabe convention. Basically, every time that we have a concept in robotics, uh, except for redundancy, but if we sync a two-link planar robot in order to visualize, most of the time it's okay. And then we can, I mean, uh, imagine it for a, a more complex structure. Uh, here, I have the, a two-link planar robot characterized by a certain theta dot one and a certain theta dot two, okay? This is uh, sigma 2. If I want to know, and sigma 1 is here, sigma 1 is here, I just change color because here is, this is sigma 1. If I want to know the relative velocity between sigma 2, angular velocity between sigma 2 and sigma 1, well, this is basically given by the angular velocity already owns by this rigid link plus this term here the contribution of theta dot two and the direction is going out from the uh, whiteboard the same this is z ma uh, i minus one when i have rotational motion i do change also the linear velocity now we are talking about uh, the relative linear velocity. Clearly, if this move and this move, the linear velocity of this point here is different from the linear velocity of this point here. And the contribution is exactly the circular motion here. So the, the cross product between the angular velocity and this vector here, this position vector here. For a rotational joint, thus, I'm also able to compute linear and angular velocities. But here, the, for the linear velocity, I have two terms and not three. Because this term here now is zero. I have a rotational motion only between those two points the origin of the two frames, it means that the relative linear velocity is not changed. Okay. Now, we are uh, almost able now to, 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 to go into the details of the Jacobian, but first, uh, I would like to better understand uh, the meaning 
of the columns of the Jacobian. Okay, this will be useful in order to better understand uh, how we compute the Jacobian. <coughs> Okay, now let us remind uh, quickly the product. So this is the Jacobian. What we want uh, is, uh, let us keep uh, our um, attention now to the linear velocity, okay? So we want the velocity of the end effector that is equal to the positional Jacobian multiplied by Q dot, okay? Now let us write the position of Jacobian in the way it is done here, so as JP1 in terms of column, okay? JP2, JPN multiplied by U dot one, U dot two, Q dot N, where each of this J is a, a three dimensional vector. Okay. Look, this matrix here. I'm writing a matrix that uh, is 3 by n, and clearly this vector here is n by 1. Now, if I just uh, apply the definition of matrix multiplication, I recognize that I can write this guy as q dot 1 multiply j P1 plus ta, 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 Q dot N J P N. The linear velocity of the end effector is somehow given by the sum of N vectors, where each vector has uh, an amplitude that is given by the product of the two, those are not unit vectors, the one of the Jacobian, okay? But this is a scalar, Q dot I is a scalar, the contribution of the velocity of each joint, and uh, the column of the Jacobian gives a direction with an amplitude as well. Let us see it, as usual for a a few link robot planner in order to understand this concept. Now, this is a three link planner robot, and uh, if I move uh, joint uh, one, for example, of one radian seconds, one in order to avoid the uh, this contribution here, okay? So this is one, I can delete it. What is the linear velocity of the end effect? Well, let us just have a look. This is joint one. Let me put it here so that I can draw on it. The only drawback of Jamboard is that I, then, I cannot increase the size of the eraser or if you know how to do it let me know because apparently this cannot be done and I always use this is 
Ok, so now let us see che è successo. Sono qua, perfetto. Ok, now let us see. Uh, I want to write the contribution of Q dot one multiplied by J P one for the end effector velocity. Let us first see from the geometric of intuitive aspect. This is the first joint that is rotating positive counterclockwise. Okay? This is the end effect. Now, instantaneously, it is a circular motion. What is the velocity of a circular motion? The cross product between the uh, angular velocity and this position here. Okay? But now the angular velocity is going uh, out from the screen and this vector here is the position of the end effector, is, is the relative position between the end effector and this one. This is the result and actually this is JP1 geometrically. This vector is JP1. Okay? Clearly, it changes with the configuration. If we change the configuration of the robot, this would be JP1. Okay? Because, uh, beh, non è un attimo. It's not really perpendicular. should be perpendicular. So this would be 90 degrees, okay? Here, I do have uh, the plot of the three columns of the positional vector. If you have a look, uh, J1 is perpendicular to the direction connecting the origin to of the base frame of the zero frame to the origin of the end effect. J2 is perpendicular to the direction connecting the origin of this, because this is moving now for this is the, the joint that is exciting the column, the second column, okay, the second joint of the structure. And J3 is now perpendicular to the last link. Those vectors, they do have uh, a norm, an amplitude that is different from one. They're not unit vectors. They're not only directions. They also own an amplitude. Okay? But this is clear. If, uh, if I move uh, this joint of one radian seconds, the linear velocity in the end is larger than if I move my uh, elbow joint at the same one radian seconds. Okay, it's basically uh, physics. So now we do have uh, also an interpretation of uh, the, the columns of the geometric Jacobian. And let us now uh, translate the equations that we found for a, ro a robotic structure in which we applied the DH convention. So now we are simplifying our notation. Let us discuss in, in a geometric or entity way. If I have a prismatic joint and I want to understand its contribution to the angular velocity, I want to compute the three by one component of the orientation Jacobian, we already say that it is zero. So angular velocity prismatic, we are here, okay? So we already verified that it's zero. Now we know that I can write it in that way and 
the, the consequence is basically that those three columns of the Jacobian are zero. Okay, by, cons by definition, by construction. So I'm able to build the Jacobian anytime that I have a prismatic joint for row four, five, and six, and column I. They're always zero, constantly zero. Now, angular velocity. What is the contribution of the joint when it is rotational? This is the generic expression for the Jacobian, and uh, I verified that is theta dot i aligned with the z direction of i minus 1. Basically, it means that uh, q dot i is uh, exactly theta dot i, and as uh, this is my 3 by 1 uh, component of the Jacobian. In this case, it is the unit vector for the orientation. Okay? Every time that I have to build a geometric Jacobian, for the second part, for uh, row 4, 5, and 6, I know that uh, if the joint is prismatic, I put 0. If the joint is rotational, I put z i minus 1. Very easy. Now, linear velocity. What is the so the first the row one two and three? What is the contribution of a prismatic joint? Now I have the dual of the contribution of a rotational for the angular. I already noticed that this is the contribution. This is the relation. Uh, I'm able to easily compute the 3 by 1 component of the Jacobian as uh, the unit vector z aligned with i minus 1. Very easy. I mean, in, in, in the end, we are building, now there is uh, just a cross product in next stuff. In the end, we are, is, we are building a Jacobian in, uh, in, uh, with a quite easy component with a clear geometrical meaning. It means that uh, when I have to write my Jacobian for the first time, I can easily debug because I can easily verify the geometric meaning of each contribution. So this, if the joint is rotational, what is the contribution? Well, this is a, a generic draw, but I think it's much better to read the, the contribution for here, from here. I just need the, the cross product between the angular velocity with its direction and this position vector connecting zero to the end effector for the joint one. So the I minus one to the end effector. And this is what is written here. Okay. Pro notational aspect, I'm uh, making a cross product uh, of uh, the direction of the angular velocity that is uh, aligned with the i minus 1, the unit vector, the z vector of i minus 1, and the vector position connecting the, the i minus 1 to the end effect. Now, I can, uh, okay, simple, uh, maybe, maybe it's an overclaim, it's not so simple when you see it for the first time, but it could have been more complex without a convention that simplified a lot of stuff, even if it's not very clear, but it simplified a lot. But I do have a systematic way, and this is the key word here, because I just need to give you the DH table. I don't have to give you the CAD file of the robot or picture of the robot, only the DH table. And you will be able to build the Jacobian, the direct kinematics and the Jacobian. Actually, with the DH table, you will be able to work on a robot up to all the, let me say, dynamical concepts. Of course, 
for the dynamics, we need uh, additional information such as the mass, for example. We, do, we haven't talked about dynamics up to now. For the mechanical engineering students, uh, this will be out of your, uh, of your uh, syllabus, okay? For uh, the, the other, we will discuss that in the second part of the, of the course. The DH table is everything I need to build the direct kinematics, to build the geometric Jacobian, and we will see to make some other stuff. So now this is my uh, compact way to build the, the geometric Jacobian. And this, is, this will be probably the page that you will have uh, in front of you when you will make the exercise uh, on, um, on uh, writing the program for your Jacobian. Let us see. Those are the six by one now column because I just take a position and orientation for the generic I joint, so the I column of the Jacobian, this one. If the joint is prismatic, I just need to put the unit vector I minus one and then zero, three by one, three zero element. For a rotational joint, I need to write this, sorry, this cross product and then the unit vector zi minus one. However, those vectors, all those are of all one, two, three, no, but zi minus one, PE and P, those three vectors are configuration dependent because I have to write their coordinates in 3D, and the coordinates change with the configuration of the robot. How? Well, where, okay, where zi minus one is simply given by the composition of all the rotation matrices starting from z0, that is 0, 0, 1, okay? Uh, do we need to, 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 to see why this is so? Let me just, let me just write it so that we understand why this is the, the, the expression from the matrix aspect. Now, I have uh, a matrix. This matrix, uh, for example, I'm sorry, it's not 0, 0, 0, it's whatever. This matrix is... Uh, uh, three, two, three. Ho fatto tutto il contrario, ragazzi. Un attimo solo, riga colonna facciamo. 2, 1, 3, 1. Ah, proprio tutto ho fatto il contrario. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, this is uh, x, y, and z of uh, the second frame with respect to the first. If I want to isolate uh, this one, I want to extract the third column. Mathematically, what I have to do is to multiply R by the vector 0, 0, 1. In that case, the result is 0, x plus 0, y plus 1 multiplied by z. So I extracted z from 
a, a, you can do it for a generic uh, matrix. If you want to extract a certain column, you multiply it by all zero except one, where is the column that you want to extract. So from the, uh, this is three by three, this is three by one. I remember the matrix multiplication, the results is three by one, okay. I mean, everything is fine, I, I, I haven't made any mistake. Okay, so this is exactly what we do have uh, here in our here. Look, at zero, zero, 001, I know that is zeta zero, so that's the reason why here there is zero, zero. And then uh, R, the rotation matrix from zero to I minus one is written in terms of composition, composition of rotation matrices. But that's something that we already have seen earlier. The important aspect is that uh, from the computing aspect, uh, this is very easy. I do need a function that computes a rotation matrix from uh, I minus one to I, function only or joint I, okay? I, I, I just build this multiplication and then I have Z I minus one. The position of the end effector is uh, simply direct kinematics. So we do know that uh, this position is achieved by computing the homogeneous transformation matrix. And then from the homogeneous transformation matrix, if I remember the homogeneous transformation matrix, uh, uh, the homogeneous transformation matrix, uh, is T0 and a factor, for example, is given by, okay, is given by the rotation matrix, the position, and then 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay? So what I do need to do is just to extract this guy here. This is the position. I do have my function that compute the uh, direct kinematics, so the homogeneous transformation matrix. As output, I have a, a, a four by four matrix, and I just extract the three component for the position that I need. Okay. And this is what is written here second ballot. Actually, the third ballot uh, says something that is an intermediate point with respect to the second ballot. I do need uh, the origin of all the frames along the structure before the end effector. So in fact, what I need to do whenever I to my nice so I have my my robot. This is uh, the end effector. In order to compute the geometric Jacobian, I need uh, all uh, the origin of the frame. Okay, I need all the the position. Actually, those positions are the intermediate results of the computation of the direct kinematics. When I, when I do compute the position of this guy here, I compute by summing the position of all the frames. So in fact, I already have this information in my code. I just need to extract it properly from my function of direct kinematics. Basically, this page represents the way I do compute the Jacob. Actually, one may think, okay, but it is plenty of libraries out there where they just compute the Jacobian for you. That's true. 
if I just need to teach robotics uh, in uh, four hours, I can skip all this and I say, okay, the Jacobian is the matrix that relates joint velocities to end effect, end effect of velocities, and you can use this library to compute. Okay. However, if I know how the Jacobian uh, is computed, I can better understand not only my program, my code, but also the control laws that I'm going to design. Okay. And also the behavior of the robot, because sometimes the robot will uh, behave in a very strange way. Okay, uh, we, we skip this. We know that we can change the frame for a, a Jacobian. Uh, as I told you, every robot has the zero Jacobian that is fixed, the zero frame that is fixed, okay? And this Jacobian is with respect to the zero frame. However, if I put together more than one robot or I work in a, in a real world where my task is not represented in the zero frame of the robot, I need to translate my quantities with respect to another frame. And I can compute the Jacobian easily with respect to another frame. This is the expression and I just need to, uh, to rotate between those frames. And so if uh, they are aligned, I don't need to rotate anything. Okay, let us just have a look of uh, now just two structures, because it, from the notation aspect, it's very difficult to, to, to accept information. starting with a three-link planar robot. Now, three-link, three rotational joints. The symbolic expression of the three columns is much more the same. Now, Zi minus one is zero for the first column, position of the end effector, position of the n, the last frame is 3, minus i minus 1 is 0, okay? Second column, now i minus 1 is 1, p3 stays 3, because this is the point I'm interested in, p3 minus p1, and then it follow easily for the last call. Now this Jacobian is six by three, okay? P zero by construction is this one. P one, P two, and P three, they can be easily computed by direct kinematics, numerically, but since this structure is very simple, I can write it down symbolically okay so this is a1 cosinus the theta one the x component simply the projection of this point here okay very easily to read now but for a generic structure of course it's not and due to this very specific robot all the z unit vectors are aligned with the uh, Z of the of the zero frame, so zero zero one. I just put those expression symbolically now, but we always do it numerically in a, in a computer. Symbolically because this is a simple structure, and I'm studying. This is my Jacobian. The Jacobian will be always. Uh, in our structure composed by trigonometric function of uh, with rotational joints clearly trigonometric function of uh, the joints okay it is configuration dependent means that here theta 1 theta 2 and theta 3 appears as variable this means it is configuration dependent now May I ask you 
what is the physical or geometrical meaning of having one row of all zero elements? I have three rows of zero elements. Can you tell me what is the meaning that here at zero? Because the, uh, the um, left-hand side is uh, linear and angular and effector velocity. Then I have the Jacobian, and here multiplied by Q dots. Okay, this is the where the Jacobian appears. So, with this interpretation, can you tell me what is the meaning of those zeros? Questo anche per voi, this is also for you remotely connected, if you want. Okay. Okay, so what is the third component? No, no, the third component on the end effector velocity. In a planar tree link. Where is where is added to? Do we do we va? Do we punto? Um, the set of the end That's it. Okay, let us make a draw. I make a, a 3D draw. My robot stays on this plane. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, non sta aggiornando voi ci siete sempre, sì? ok, non sta aggiornando uh, is not updating uh, the jamboard refresh, vediamo che succede Okay, the connection seems to be good for the computer. Uh, let me check. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Is just slowly synchronizing very slow in synchronizes, but uh, I don't think it's our fault. Mm. The connection is fast. Well, fast, uh, fast enough is it in this test. Okay, so... <laughs> Okay, so let us take a 10 minutes break. This is a, I mean, a sign that it's moment to take a break. And uh, is uh, 54, uh, let us meet at uh, 10.05. Okay, I will stop the registration, but the meet, um, meeting will be open. <laughs>